Alrighty, welcome to a three on three challenge. It is myself, my boy Mac Smith, me and Mac always teaming, and Luis Salvato, the real LSV, taking on the Austrians once again. Max Capone, the Smasher, and of course, uh, Forbane. Uh, I, I, always, I always get that wrong. But in, in any case, uh, Anton and his squad challenged us once more. And I'm going to open a Mox Emerald and pass Max Capone a Fiery Confluence or Wooded Foothills. Dealer's choice. Max, Ma Mac is going to get the other one. Yeah, and then maybe Ragran Triumph. No, that's not even going to come back. So I'll, I'll just take the Mox and kind of see where, where things go. Oh, Ignoble Hierarch could be one of those places. I passing a Badlands. So it's, again, interesting dynamics. We've played against these guys a lot. And uh, Max Capone likes drafting red black, but as I mentioned before, is aware that we know he likes drafting red black. So sometimes he throws in some curve balls. But still, if he took Wooded Foothills or Fiery Confluence, I kind of expect Badlands to be the next pick. This is kind of a weak pack. Hopefully, uh, Mac gets this Adeline. It's also a Lorien Revealed. I'm going to take Ignoble Hierarch. It just works really well with Mox. And I actually just think it's the best card in the pack. Maybe Adeline is better. But I don't really think it makes sense to take a double white card, especially since Mac likes to draft white and Max Capone does not. So I kind of like passing that. Lorien Revealed, Badlands, Adeline are going to go. Maybe Echo. Jetmere's Garden might come back. Once Upon a Time is a pretty good shot of coming back. Green Sun Zenith has a pretty good shot of coming back. So, ooh, Loris of the Dream Den. Yeah, I'm in. Green is my least favorite color to pair with Luris, but Ignoble Hierarch is very good with Luris, and so is a Mox, just because you always have a guaranteed three mana play of putting Luris into your hand. Whenever you have Mox in your opening hand, you just get to play that on turn two if you want to. Passing a Pyrokinesis, a Persist, I guess a World Spine, Lotus Petal, Tundra. But yeah, this this is a it's Luris time, baby. Also, one thing that's kind of nice about where I'm at right here is I'm taking Luris when I've got two green cards or green-ish cards, makes it a little harder to cut me off because uh, four legs here, that's what that's what four bay means in, in uh, German, is probably aware that I have a good chance of taking the Luris here and I, I get to pivot a little bit. I'm not necessarily going white-black here. Mm -hmm. Next up, we've got a Taiga Fire Covenant. That's what I'm going to take. Raven Inspector and Timeless Dragon. But what's nice about taking Fire Covenant is if Max did go Fiery Confluence into Badlands, Fire Covenant's A, a great card for him, and B, it's going to be a good card for me. I'll try to play it. Ignoble helps. Luris means I, I want to be black anyway. And uh, I can, by going Luris, I can kind of cut him off. Though I'm passing an Emrakul there. That's a little bit tough. And now there's Chain Lightning versus Smuggler's Copter. I do like both those cards, but I think Copter is going to be really excellent in a Luris style deck. Passing a Jace as well, and a Dark Ritual. So these cards are good. But I really like Copter here. So I'm going to take Copter. Dark Ritual, Jace, Chain Lightning are almost assuredly going to go. That's three. Maybe Image, Spire Bluff. Maybe I get Besaidu back. I don't know. But I think this is a, a spot to take Smuggler's Copter. All right, here. Interesting. There's Haywire Might. I mean, Yavamai, I guess. Shieldred's Edict, Gix's Command, Utopia Sprawl. I don't want to take Utopia Sprawl. I, I want to play some green because Ignoble's really strong, but I don't really want to play Sprawl. And I just, I think Sprawl's kind of weak. I also want, I'm biased towards creatures that crew copter and get brought back with Luris. So Haywire Might's the card I want most, but I might take Shieldred's Edict because it's good, cheap interaction. And I think I'll wheel one of the green things. Gix's Command is also pretty good in a Luris deck because it can get Luris back from the graveyard. Every Luris deck, I really want one of those effects. Okay, green-black duel, two black removal spells, red-black duel. There's also Containment Priest. I think I did take the red-black duel because I think it cuts max more. It's good with Fire Covenant. I'm going to want both duels, but maybe the green-black one wheels or one of these removal spells. But I think taking the red-black duel makes the most sense from a team drafting perspective. So that's where I'm going to be. And uh, passing a name sticker and two black removal spells, that's fine. Once Upon a Time came back. Green Sun Zenith did not. Pyrite Spellbomb came back. I love it with Luris. I might just do that. Once Upon a Time is very good, but I think this is a very good Pyrite Spellbomb deck. And passing Echo, good. I'm kind of glad because Salvato loves these like big mana combo decks. The last time we did a three on three, I was passing to Salvato. I drafted Blue Green Cutting him and he still drafted it. So I'm glad he didn't, he didn't fall into that trap, but I'm going to take Pyrite Spellbomb here. 
a lot of these cards I would play too if, if they came back. Hmm. There's a Tundra and a Botanical Sanctum here. There's also World Spine Worm Persist and Royal Warden. It's, de it's a definitely possible that Max didn't go red black. I'm not like going all in on assuming that. I think I will take Botanical Sanctum because turn one green for Ignoble. I'll probably want to put a blue card in my deck if I get a good one. And a white blue is a little further away from what I want. Can't play Trinket Mage. Don't want Mystical Tutor. All right. Dark Depths came back. So did Sinkhole. There's also Thassa's Oracle. I can't play Timeless Dragon. Don't care about Goblin Engineer. I think Depths is kind of weak. I think I'll just take Sinkhole here. Not sure that I'm going to play it, but eh, it's a possibility. Oh, and there's a blue card I want. Phantasmal Image is back. I do like Besaju a lot, but Phantasmal Image in a Luris deck is just fantastic. So I will take that over Grim and Talisman. So someone else is drafting green. That's okay. Haywire Might came back. I really wanted that back. It's just so good with Luris. Oh man, though, Gix's Command is also really good. Huh. I, I gotta take Gix's Command. I think Gix's Command is just excellent in this kind of deck. There's just a lot of ways you can set it up to be really, really good. Grasp and Cut Down came back. I think Grasp is a little bit better. They're both pretty strong. I think I'd rather have Infernal Grasp. And then... I'll take Jar because I think Welder is pretty bad. And last pick, Mystical Tutor. Interesting. All right. Well, I'm looking forward to opening the Lotus to go with my Luris, but I like how pack one went. I could use a little more fixing because I'm trying to play currently four colors, but I also am not like that deep into green, so I could definitely be, get away from that. This is a kind of rough pack to open. Solitude and Fury and Palace Jailer, but... I think I just ship all of them and take Chromox. Chromox is really good in these decks too. And I'm not in a position to play any of those other cards. I don't really want to just randomly hate draft. I mean, it makes no sense to take a white card regardless. Stoneforge, I'm not the good equipment I can't put in my deck anyway. I would love to wheel Concealing Curtains, but I'm just going to take Chromox past Solitude, Fury, Jailer, Stoneforge, True Name, something like that. Hmm. All right. Well, quite the pack. This pack has Urza's Bobble, which is fantastic with Luris. Wasteland, which is just great. Stomping Ground I actually would really like, but I don't think I can take that here. Turok is also good. I think I'm just going to take the Wasteland because I think Wasteland is just good in this kind of deck. And then one of Turok or Urza's Bobble is like going to wheel. There's also Stomping Ground. I guess I could just take Stomping Ground. Hmm. Maybe that's better. Though, I have the sinkhole. I, I kind of wish I got that black green land back, but I didn't think that was very likely. I don't want to take Get Lost. This is kind of a weak pack, but I'm going to get something back. I just am I'm not, I'm not sure what, like what I want to take here. Maybe just because, maybe I just take the Stomping Ground, actually. I want to be able to, to play all these cards. All right, that's fine. I'll take Stomping Ground. Oh, I'm almost assuredly going to slam from the Catacombs. I love it in Luris decks. It's an expensive spell that you can put in your Luris deck. It's awesome. Outland Liberator probably comes back. Temple Garden doesn't help me too much. Thundering Falls it would be useful. Restless Vents. Yeah, there's a bunch of different stuff, but I'll just take the from the Catacombs. And I'm pretty happy about this direction. I think this is a start to a very good deck. All right, this pack has an LED, a Dothy Voidwalker... <laughs> Show of a brawler, I guess. Witherbloom command I like too. I do like Jace. Jace. Jace would actually be pretty sick in this deck, but it feels like I'm going a really heavy black. It feels like Dothy Voidwalker's got to be the, the pick here. Yeah. And then I don't think LED is going to come back, but Witherbloom command might. I'm just not that heavy in blue, so I think the Dothy Voidwalker is going to fit really nicely, and it's really good with Luris. I could use a few more creatures. That is something that I'm looking for here. And here... We've got a <laughs> brain freeze, but I, I'm really not doing that. Can't play Cord or Carnosaur or Necromancy. I can play Gitaxian Probe. I do love that card too. Luris and Gitaxian Probe, like two of my favorite cards. If the third path Iconoclast came back, that would have been nice too. I actually would love Dragon's Rage Channeler in this deck, but I think Probe is just too strong not to take. And Channeler has a good chance of wheeling. Someone's going to take Necromancy. At this point, I've moved my uh, assumption that Max is playing black red down very low, given the packs passing from the Catacombs, Necromancy, all that. So let's just take Probe. I would also play Scrapwork Mud if it came back. Oh, I've got to slam Blood Crypt here, right? Passing the big reanimate creatures, maybe uh, maybe four beans into those, but Blood Crypt is just perfect for this deck. 
I guess I only have one and a half red cards, but I probably will play play more. And I don't really like Mana Confluence that much. All right, Concealing Curtain's Wield. I was just hoping that would be the case. Stoneforge and Hero are still here. I really hope that Anton is not playing white, but what can you do? I'll take that. Okay, Wasteland Turok and Bobble all wield. Interesting. I still do like Wasteland a lot, but Bobble with Luris is just so unbelievably broken. I think I got to take it. Pass a Wasteland. Turok has like a decent chance of coming back. It's not zero. Because uh, someone's going to take Wasteland, Tidebinder, Virtue, and Usher. So someone just needs to value Silent Clearing over Turok. Because I think Misha's Workshop at this point does not look like it's going to make anyone's deck. But I like this. I'm just like Jund Luris. That's, that's a good place to be. Scrap Peep came back. Land Grant is also kind of nice. I can't get black with it is the main issue, but it gets red-green. I also am passing both Triumph of St. Catherine and Shadow Grange. Maybe I just take Scrap Heap, though. Scrap Heap is a decent card. It's good with Smuggler's Copter on either direction. It can crew it, or you can discard it to Copter. Yeah, I guess I'll just take that and pass the rest of those things. Witherbloom came back. So did Tomb Fortress. I really like Tomb Fortress as well. I'm not going to take any of the three mana cards or Bazaar. Oh man, Witherbloom Command is a pretty nice one. And I already have from the Catacombs and Gix's Command. Yeah, let's go with Witherbloom here. I think that that's, that's what this deck wants to take. And I, I, I feel like I have pretty good fixing. I could use a little bit more. Wow, Necromancy Wield? I guess I'll just take it now. I, I don't care too much about Scrapwork Mutt, so I'd rather just take the Necromancy. And I don't think this is looking like a Gaia's Cradle deck so much. So, interesting. I did not anticipate that happening. Uh, I'm not playing any of these. I guess I'll hate the Gristle brand. Sure. It's just the most generically powerful, and like all of these have their applications. I don't really have a good reason to think Anton's doing any specific thing. And if there's two blue cards, like I could hate one, and the other one could be more what he was looking for. I, I don't know. I'm just going to take the Gristle brand, and then I'll take the Sanguine Evangelist now in case he is playing white. Interesting, uh, interesting pack. Okay, going into pack three. Still could use a little bit more in the way of fixing, of course. Ah, Turok didn't come back. All right, well, I'll take my Silent Clearing, I suppose. I would have played Turok too, but I, I think I'm pretty happy about Stomping Ground into, into Bobble out of that pack. All right, Archfiend and... Oh, Reanimate. Love it. Reanimate is just such a great card and great with Luris. So I'm going to take Reanimate. Passing a Chaos Defiler, which feels like that's not Max's cup of tea. As well as some good blue cards. Maybe Mishra's Bobble comes back. But I'm slamming Reanimate. The card is just excellent. I've got good removal. What I don't have is discard. I could use some discard. I guess I have the Concealing Curtains. That does help. I could use discard. I could use a little bit more fixing. I have Chrome Mox and Mox Emerald. So I actually feel pretty good about Acceleration in this deck. And yeah, I, I like how this is going. I think this is a, a, extremely solid going into pack three. Obviously, the, the first couple picks offer... A wide range of things that could happen so hopefully hopefully it's good things all right well i guess the good thing that'll happen here is i'll take demonic tutor it's the best card in the pack and it's black passing a trop which i wouldn't mind a k command which i would love and yeah, nothing else here that i'm like super interested in so if k command doesn't heal this pack's gonna be a little empty for me but i don't i don't mind taking a dt here and then next pack we've got volcanic island it's not great. I think balance would be good here, but I don't really have the mana to play for it. Hmm. What am I supposed to do? This pack's actually really weak for me. I guess Rafine's Tower, it's blue, black, white. But I do have a blue card in Phantasmal Image. So that is something. Yeah. Don't like that I can't take all the good cards, any good cards out of this pack. I guess maybe I just take the Volcanic. Because like I would like Urborg, but I think it'll come back. I don't think I have the mana to really play Spell Pierce or Cathar Commando. Those cards would both be higher on my list. Yeah, I guess I'll unhappily take Volcanic Island out of this pack. That 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 was a beat. Oh, and this pack is not much better. Wow. This pack's all white cards. Othari, Arwen, Council's Judgment, Spell Queller, Aragorn. The good news is maybe uh Anton is not playing uh, not playing white, which I guess would be good news for where I'm positioned. 
I could take a blue black land. I still just have the one blue card, so I don't need all these blue lands that much. Luminarch would be great. I just can't really, I can't really cast it. Uh, same with Council's Judgment. Shadowy Backstreet is a white black duel. That doesn't really help. Lush Portico is a green white duel that helps cast Luris. Oof. I don't really see a reason to hate any of these cards. I guess I'll just take the Dark Six Row. See, now, now I'm unhappy because my first couple picks were pretty bad. Okay, well, I do like him to Turok here. I have, I'm playing Heavy Black. I can actually cast it. Let's pick five. I'm not going to get much more out of this pack, unfortunately. I mean, we already know that. I guess I'm pretty close to enough playables already, but it's just kind of rough to see the first five picks. I got a DT, a Reanimate, a Him, two Bricks, basically. Because I don't, at this point, it doesn't even look like I have a blue card I want to play besides Phantasmal Image. I mean, if I get another blue card in this pack, maybe that could change, but I'm not sure. As it turned out, Black Green Land would have worked out better, but it's not like I have tons of green cards either. I'm mostly just black. I guess that makes my mana all decent, <laughs> at the very least. I've got one red card, one green card, and one blue card. Uh, two green cards. And the rest are all black cards. Okay, yeah, that makes me feel a little better, but... I would really like to pick up like one more strong playable. Okay. Here there's Snuff Out and Bitter Triumph. I'm going to take Snuff Out. I love Snuff Out. And hope to wheel... I'm not going to wheel Bitter Triumph, I don't think. But I'm happy enough taking Snuff Out. That that seems pretty good for me. Huh. I kind of wonder... What if I... Oh, I, I, now I really wish I took the Turok. Though I, I do want Witherbloom still. I'm just looking at like what could I... What could I cut so I'm just like mono black, basically? That's an interesting spot. All right, Mishra's Bobble came back, and that is just going to be totally great in this deck. So I'm going to slam that. There is Thopster Foundry, but the sword's already gone. We're not doing that. Maelstrom Pulse is a card I would also consider taking if, if it came back. Oh, I could take Arcane Denial. This is actually the good kind of de a good deck for Arcane Denial, and I have three blue lands. So that's not too bad. I don't care too much about passing any of these cards. All right, let's take Arcane Denial. Maybe I'll sideboard it against a combo or something like that. It can be pretty good in those matchups. Okay, Urborg came back, so did Rafine's Tower, so did Lazav. Basalt Monolith came back from the direction of Frenzy Gadgeteer, so clearly that's not getting played. Lazav is actually really nice. I mean, maybe I just take Lazav, because I'm not going to be playing that many non-black lands anyway. What's more likely to wheel? What do I care if it wheels? Um... This looks like an excellent Lazav deck. Let's just take Lazav, and if Urborg comes back, great. All right, now it's a bunch of cards I can't play. Do I have a strong opinion on any of these? I could hate the Council's Judgment, but I'd be worried I'd be hating from Mac. I could take the green-white land, which I guess I'm just not going to play. I'll just take the green-white land. I don't really know what, what's happening there. Here, I could play Starnheim Unleashed in my deck if I really wanted to, but I, I'm probably not going to. There's almost no way Corpse Dance is good, right? I don't really have any ways to discard. I was looking at Corpse Dance, Necromancy, and Gristlebrand. Let's just take the Corpse Dance because I don't want to hate one of the two white cards. Now there's Dryad Arbor, which I don't care about. Doomsday Fire Blast. Yeah, I can't, I can't fathom caring about any of these. I guess I'll just take the Black-White Land. I mean, at the very least, it's Concealed Courtier is, is a swamp that can help cast Lurus, you know. Oh, Dress Down Lurus is actually really nice, too. All right, you can get a last pick, Chrome Host Seed Shark. That's fine. Take the seat of the Synod and pass Candelabra, and then last pick, bring the light. Okay. Well, I like how this went. Ended up in a kind of weird spot. Got not a single green card after the Ignoble and Witherbloom, but I think that's that's okay. Let's get to deck building. All right. Yeah, I was just chatting with my team a bit, and uh, this is where I ended up. No green cards. I really regret now taking Stomping Ground over effectively Turok or Wasteland, but um, this deck's still great. Double Bobble Luris is just fantastic. With multiple ways to get Luris back, I have Reanimate and From the Catacombs and Gix's Command. Ended up playing blue for Phantasmal Image, Dress Down, Arcane Denial, and Lazav. I think Lazav's going to be excellent here. Mana base is pretty good. Seven blue, ten black, plus or nine black, plus Chrome Mox is the tenth. And then a uh, lot of removal and not as much anti-spell disruption. There's Arcane Denial and Concealing Curtains and him. But a lot of removal against green decks, and they have, like, looks like maybe two green decks. So I like where I'm at, and I'm going to take a look at my teammates' decks now. All right. 
we've actually got an assignment here. Luis Salvato drafted a nice one, and he just sent me the whole deck file. He's like, you know, work your magic, build the deck. So I'm going to do that. He's got a Black Lotus LED Mox Lotus Petal. This is a Yogwell deck. There rarely are Yogwell decks, but this is it. Okay. So we've got Thassa's Oracle, with, but we have Tendrils and Brain Freeze. No Breach, sadly. What is in the sideboard? Sneak, Mystic Forge, Urbor. Yeah, these, these cards don't seem like they do too much. And in terms of fixing, we've got red, black, blue, black, and then two blue, red lands, and a black, white land. But I think balance is going to be really good. So this is a lot of cards. Let's do some cuts. Ember Death Shieldbreaker probably can get cut. Lorian Revealed goes down here. Don't actually even really like upheaval here. I think Echo Vions is a good way to use all that mana. Inferno Titan and Mind Twist are fine too, but upheaval I'm not so into. Vendillion Click is just okay. I like Ragavan. The mana works for oust, I guess I like it, but my guess is it won't. Scrapwork Mutt. So the nice thing about Scrapwork Mutt is it can discard Echo, and Unmarked Grave can also put Echo into your graveyard. This is now, currently this is 13 land plus these, these artifacts, and so 14 land. Really, 16 land here if you count, uh, or 15 land here. 13, 14, 15 land here if you count Lauren Revealed and Mox. So we're not even like that many cards under or over. Mm, don't know about this Inferno Titan. I think that this deck can win with just like... Well, the problem with winning with just Tendril's Brain Freeze is if you don't get up to enough Storm, you're just going to have a really hard time. So I guess Inferno Titan does well from that re respect. It's also just black-white. I mean, this is a good balance deck, so I definitely want to play balance. Not sure on Tishana's Tidebinder. It's a powerful card. Oh, I do not like Coalition Relic. So maybe take out the Relic. Definitely leave Lelia. Lelia's awesome. Scrapbrook Mutt. I think Unmarked Grave is actually good enough with Echo of Eons and with Yogwell. If you cast Unmarked Grave, you can just go get Lotus before casting Yogwell with LED and Black Lotus and Petal. You can just go pretty nuts. There's also a Ponder, which is nice. Sneak plus Torsten, but there's not that many creatures to get. It does get 7 one ones. Displacer Kitten, no, nothing here really looks that great with Displacer Kitten. I think something like this. This is now 14, 15, 16 lands. Mm, I would like to get to 17 even with those mana artifacts. There's also, Savada also has like expressive iteration and stuff. All right, let's take a look here. If we think two of them are playing green, I actually kind of like the Inferno Titan. I still don't really like Coalition Relic, but it does get better with Titan. It's also kind of nice with balance. Maybe the Tishana's Tidebinder and a true name aren't needed though. And then now it's 17 lands plus those three mana artifacts. Echo, basically two draw sevens with Echo Unmarked Grave. Trinket Mage to go get all the, the jewelry. And then Inferno Titan is like the backup win condition. I, th I think I like that. Well, we'll see what the, the guys say. Okay, so looking at Salvato's deck, I think I think this is where I, this is what I'm going to send him. I think this looks pretty good to me. All right, what's Mac up to? Oh, his usual tricks. I knew Mac was going to draft white. See, that's why I like teaming with Mac. We can, we know each other's moves. Mox Diamond, Mox Pearl, Broadside Bombardiers, Solid Two. Didn't get the Palace Jailer. Manatee, Mother of Runes, bunch of good twos. Loran, Adeline, Council's Judgment. The saddest Bloodstained Mire in the sideboard. Uh, no red white lands, and. Uh, Fiery Confluence, Unholy Heat, Grim, Simeon Spirit Guide, but those aren't necessary. So I like Max deck, and uh, hopefully we take this down. Alrighty, time for round one against the Smasher. Ooh, this is a nice little hand. I'm definitely going to keep. Turn one, I can DT, but I'll probably just play Scrap Heap Scrounger, get the beats going. And Swamp, Mox. Oh, that's not what I wanted to play. Scrap Heap Scrounger. And then turn two... We'll see what the play is. Pentad Prism for two. Okay, I can't do anything about that. Island, all right, let's attack and... I'm gonna DT for something here. Don't know what though. I could also just put Luris in hand. Part of the issue is like, yeah, I'm just gonna do that. The reason I wanna just put Luris into hand is I wanna DT, but if, I don't know if I want to get like snuff out. I could get him to Turok, but if I DT for him and then Smasher uses Pentad Prism to play like, I don't know, Greater Gargaroth or something like that, I would really rather have the DT in hand. 
Okay, Metamorphose, go nuts, I guess. Let's see what you got. Blue, green. I don't have red yet for pyrite, unfortunately. I mean, I have a tapped red source, but... Okay, is this like Aragorn or something? Yeah, all right. Well, in that case, I'm pretty glad I saved the DT. Because I'm going to go ahead and DT and snuff that thing out. Unless I just draw it. Oh, Fire Covenant's nice, but let's, let's still do that plan. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to be able to pay for Spell Pierce anyway. Take the Monarch, and then uh, Fire Covenant's pretty good at keeping the Monarch. And I have uh, From the Catacombs to steal Aragorn. I like that too. Him to Turok. Oh, I'll keep that on top. Him is like a little awkward mana-wise here, but if I draw another black source, uh, well, I guess I'm actually pretty far away from casting him plus Fire Covenant, but if I draw another red source, I can use Pyrite. Oh, Spellseeker. I hope it's not for Time Walk. Yikes. Let's see what you got. It's just going to make our lives so much harder if that's the case. But Ancestral Recall. All right. Whew. Just Ancestral. <laughs> Oh, using the Pentad to cast Ancestral? Yeah, that really doesn't bother me too much. Oh, and no lands. <laughs> Ooh, that's going to be a tough one. All right, a Black Source would be pretty good here. Oh, Probe is actually even better. Let's go Gitaxian Probe. What are you working with? Ancestral's out. Through the Breach, Triplicate Titan. Okay, I don't like that very much. I'm not going to lie. Oh, but you're not very close to casting it. Okay. Um... I think I'm just going to hit with Scrounger. Let's see. I could, put, I could put Aragorn into play, become the Monarch. I could also him and hope to hit Breach or one of these things. It's a Teferi. What to do, what to do. I could also Luris and just draw two cards off, uh, draw a card off Spellbomb, replay Spellbomb. That one doesn't seem like super appealing. I don't think, I mean, from the Catacombs gets me a, a land as well but then the problem with that is leyline binding gives the yeah gives the smasher the initiative so i don't like that either this is actually a pretty tough turn getaxian probe is so busted i should just always take the card when i see it mm. <laughs> i kind of feel like i don't want to play from the catacombs this turn so it's better to play him i think it's better actually to play him later because next turn presumably we're going to see some of these plays. So Binding costs two mana. You can take the initiative back. The problem with Binding, or with uh, playing Luris, I, I kind of want to just Pyrite the Spell Seeker. <laughs> it just leaves me with such a low... Like, that is such an inefficient play. I really, I kind of don't like any of my options. It's actually really funny. So what, what, what are we supposed to do here? The spell seekers <laughs> kind of running rampant. I could crack pirate spell bomb, no, but it, and then I go Luris replay spell bomb, and then hit down to eleven. You binding the Luris take the monarch, but it's not the initiative. And then next turn I could from the catacombs. This island, these islands are messing me up pretty bad here. Um. I don't think him is what I want to do. I guess the Luris is going to die pretty quickly, no matter what. All right, let's draw a card off Pirate Spell Bomb. Oh. Phantasmal Image can copy Spellseeker. That's pretty nice. Let's take a look real quick. What do we want to get? If we do that, we could get Reanimate. Oh, and then we could put Aragorn into play. Okay. Yeah, I like that. And then... Yeah, first of all, attack with Scrap Heap Scrounger. All right, well, Kraken Spell Bomb did the trick, because now I go Phantasmal Image, copy Spell Seeker. Use the ability. I could get Arcane Denial too, but I, I think I think reanimating Aragorn is going to work out pretty nicely. Reanimate Aragorn, I go to 10, become the Monarch again. Now I can play Dark Slick Shores, draw a card, and then pretty unlikely that Smasher is going to be able to remove both my blockers. And next turn I can attack for a lot, and I have him plus Fire fire Covenant up. And if I get one Aragorn hit in, then that, then that fuels the Fire Covenant pretty nicely. 
And if Smasher doesn't draw a land this turn, they're basically dead. Okay, so we're playing against like four color combo, like green, blue, like team or combo splashing a little bit of white. It's kind of what it's looking like here. Well, I like my spot. I mean, if, okay, this is Leyline Binding. Get the Aragorn out. Yeah. And then Delighted Halfling. Okay, so. And then those five cards. Oh, it didn't draw a land. Yeah, this is this is gonna be pretty brutal then. Oh, bobble, sure. Free bobble. Let's see if we can if we can nab the sixth card here. <laughs> pretty unlikely, but yeah. All right, triplicate Titan. So I'm gonna probably cast Fire Covenant and him, but let's just start with the him to Turok here, and see what we hit. I would like to get through the breach. I got Trumpet and Carnosaur and Feywild Caretaker. Okay. And I'll Fire Covenant those down. Red, black, one. And then attack for four. I guess I died at like Ancient Tomb. But, you know, what are you going to do? And next turn... Oh, Shieldred's Edict is actually pretty nice if I get another turn here. Oh, and that's exactly the card I was thinking. Arcane Denial just ends the game. Oh, okay. Arcane Denial effectively ends the game, though, because Through the Breach was like the only way that Smasher was going to win this game. And uh, we've got that covered now. <laughs> we really have it covered, actually. Uh, let's go. Sure, we'll play the land. Yeah, we got this. We got this on lock. We get to attack. You can block the scrap heap. Sack your thing. I'm going to Sinkhole. Sinkhole is going to be good in this matchup, I believe. Okay, take one. Sinkhole your Raugrin Trium. <laughs> play Luris. And then play a Bobble here. And Bobble you. Just because I want the card now. All right. It just really likes showing me Triplicate Titan. All right. That will do it. We got game one here, barring... I mean, I don't really know anything that can actually stop me from winning this game. I mean, I guess I have to show Arcane Denial probably here. But because if Smasher goes land to Teferi, then uh, Arcane Denial is necessary to make sure I have lethal. But yeah, it's not a big deal. They, they, know, they probably know it's in my pool somewhere anyway. And they're not going to be surprised to find out that I've got counter spells in my deck. I think I was like basically the only black drafter that we've seen. Is that true? Uh, oh, it looks like Matt, Max Capone is Jund. Okay. Well, that's good because I was heavy black passing to Max. And I thought I was playing green and red for a lot of that time too. So I feel like I didn't pass too much there. All right. We got game one. Okay. So sideboard against a combo deck. Uh... I mean, I could put in Silent Clearing just as, like, a way to... Because if the life total doesn't matter too much, then it's, like, an extra kind of value card. Mystical Tutor, I still don't really like here. Uh, no, I, I like where I'm at. This deck... My deck does not have a lot of sideboard options, to be honest. All right. I'll reveal Luris. And what do we got? Uh, I'll keep this on the draw. It's a one land on the double draw with Gitaxian Probe. Arcane Denial is pretty good in this matchup, and any swamp gives me into Lazav and Scrap Heaps Grinder territory. And I'm going to probe now because I get, in some ways, probing w w later is good to figure out what's going on. But uh, one of the things about probing now is if I drew Mox Emerald, then I could play Eternal and Scrap Heap. Okay, Ancestral is good, obviously, but I'll play a turn two Lazav. Smasher's going to go land and upkeep Ancestral is my guess. Blightsteel Colossus, huh? That's a big one. I mean, if I play Lazav on two, Carnosaur just eats it, but you have to discard the Carnosaur. That's probably fine. Mm -hmm. Ancestral away. It also... I don't know. I feel like Smasher has a lot of cards they could play, and playing the, the Scrap Heap Scrounger, I feel like doesn't really get me anywhere. Also, this puts Carnosaur in the graveyard from the Catacombs, which I think is really nice. 
Are we tapping Rogue Grand Triumph? No, we're just we're gonna Carnosaur here, I would imagine. Or play a, a card that's good at blocking. Yeah. Alright, Mox. Concealing curtains, huh? I'm not worried about something coming out this turn. So I think I'm just gonna play my two creatures here. I could I could have DT'd for Mox and then hope to draw a land. Or maybe I should have just DT'd and reanimated Carnosaur. That's interesting. Oh, I guess Ancestral's gone. So I don't really know. Smasher has about 20 million cards in hand. I'm just going to attack for three and DT here. I'm just worried about getting uh, through the Breach next turn. I don't really want to tap out for that. And I didn't really want to try to use flip Concealing Curtains against Leyline Binding. It felt like I was getting baited. So let's DT. And what are we getting? He's got Blightsteel in hand. Oh. Could get him, could just get reanimate. Dress down is actually really good in this matchup, so I gotta keep that in mind. I kind of feel like reanimate's gonna be great here though. I feel like I can set up a turn where I do that. Smasher gonna end of turn binding. You wanna cast it now? <laughs> We're gonna cast it later. Alright, no plays. The other thing is. Ooh. I could Arcane Denial then from the Catacombs. I would like to draw a land here. Not enough to tutor for it. I think that'd be too weak. But if I draw a land, then I might be able to do something pretty good. Oh, is this Ar If this is Aragorn, I'm really happy about that. I just Infernal Grasp it. Okay, sure. And then I become the Monarch. Then the pressure's on. Oh, yeah, this is going to be great. Okay, Infernal Grasp your Aragorn. You draw your card. I'm glad I have that over cut down. Oh, land is so good. Because now I'm going to flip Concealing Curtains. What you got? I spy with my little revealing eye. Emrakul, Feywild Caretaker. <laughs> A million big things. Uh, I mean, I guess it's got to be Brazen Bar, where I, I think. Or... It could be Feywild Caretaker. And then I reanimate and hope they don't draw through the breach exactly. Hmm. I could also already reanimate Aragorn, and I have From the Catacombs. No, let's just take the Borrower, because that also steals back reanimated things. And then I pass. I'm the Monarch. I'll just draw, I'll just draw my card here. I have a, a pretty fast win. Oh, Phantasmal Image too. Yeah, this, this matchup feels pretty good. I'm a little light on counter spells. I just have the one. But all the reanimate stuff that steals from their graveyard is so good. <laughs> so, Smasher didn't have the mountain. Feywild Caretaker. Yeah, I think we gotta just... Hmm. Do I counter it? They played the mountain. They didn't already have that. So they have these five. They have a bolt too. Yeah, yeah. Let's just counter it. I know. I know they get to draw two cards, but I'm actually getting to the point where from the breach doesn't just immediately kill me either. So I think that's fine. Let's draw. I draw a card. Okay, Smasher draws two. Hers is Bobble. Here, let's attack first, because if they cast the Bolt, it gives me one more uh, look at a Bobble card. Mm -hmm. You kind of got to Bolt the Scrap Heap Scrounger here. It'd be crazy not to. All right. Bobble you. Revealed Blight Seal again, sure. And then... Let's go reanimate on Feywild Caretaker. I think I'm just going to put two Feywild Caretakers into play because that, I think, beats that Emrakul. Mountain. It doesn't matter which land I play, I guess. Phantasmal Image, Feywild Caretaker. Uh, forge, because I definitely want to try to go for lethal here, and then pass the turn and get two birds. 
and draw a card. And there's not many things I could draw that would do anything, but I don't think I die to any any of the breach cards. Emrakul, I just sack six lands, block with a fairy dragon, and I just win. Blightsteel, I can easily block down. I don't think I care. Blights and uh, triplicate titan hits me to two, puts three things into play, and then I, they, they, I guess they get the initiative, but then on my turn, I attack with everything, and they basically just die. <laughs> they have to double block this, block this. They take five down to three, and then get trapped down to negative two. I think we pretty much have our bases covered here. I like it. All right, do we draw through the breach? Oh, to fairy. <laughs> I mean, you got to try. These are these are serious drafts, I'll tell you that much. But uh, <laughs> yeah, to fairy's not going to do the trick here. Okay, there we go. Love the start. Mac one and Salvato's in game three, so I like where we're at. All right, the clean 3-0 sweep round one. You love to see it. I would like to play first, reveal Allurus Companion, and playing against Lutri Companions. We're playing against Jeskai Lutri with uh, Fire Blast. Got to watch out for that one. I passed that late Fire Blast. I didn't think Max was going to use it. I also got it mixed up. Max is playing Jeskai Lutri and, um, is it Forbena, I believe? Fjorbena is playing uh, the Jun deck. Oh, I like this hand. No second Swamp yet, but, you know, it's on its way. And uh, turn one, Swamp, turn two, Lazov. Really hope I draw a land, a, a land, a Swamp specifically, so that I can him and then attack with Lazov and get value. Hmm, don't like that. Don't like this at all. Oh, I'm going to have to just kill that. Uh, hmm. Yeah, I really don't want that thing making tokens. Let's... Do I want a Shieldred's Edict or Infernal Grasp? I think Shieldred's Edict. Just... If I get dazed or Force Negation, that would be annoying, I suppose. All right, that's gone. Now I'm going to have to probably settle for a turn three Lazav. I could... Also, a Chrome Host Seed Charco. I guess I'll kill that too. Oh man, if I draw Mox here. Because I wanted to go Mox, image the, the Chrome Host Seed Shark, and then get value. Let's see. Mishra's Bobble. I'm going to Infernal Grasp the Seed Shark though. Um, I actually think I'm going to upkeep it. I actually am concerned about Force of Negation. There's not that many spells Max has. Like, we know about Force of Negation. And if I if I get my Infernal Grasp forced here, it's just so bad. It's thinking about forcing the Mishra's Bobble because of Loris. It's kind of what I feel like. Yeah, I'm going to upkeep this. Not a play you'd normally make, but I think this is fine. Drawing a Batter Skull. Oh, I like that. All right, let's pass the turn. Mm-hmm. Upkeep, Infernal Grasp. I'll draw my card first, no reason not to. All right, and then I'll Infernal Grasp. I feel real dumb if I get mana leaked or, or spell pierced or something, but once again, uh, we do know about some of the cards in this deck. And is this Lutri? Okay, we take those. And no lands, all right. Land, 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 land. Oh, no, but even better. Probe into land is just so sick. All right, do we have the Force of Negation? No, we have Lutri. Oh, wow. Very strong hand if he draws land. <sighs> really wanted to draw land myself, but I guess I'll him here. He can hit Caves of Chaos Adventure, please. No, I hit Othari and Flame Slash. All right. No, no land here would be really nice for me. Okay, that's not a land. Young Pyromancer. Sure, that doesn't even really do that much. Land. No, still no land. Mm. I'll play Do Dothy Voidwalker, though. It's pretty good. He can't. De he's not very close to Fire Blasting it, and uh, Dothy Voidwalker takes the initiative if he does draw a land here. He can cast Lutri. That's not a big deal. Okay, he drew a mountain. So what am I going to do? Obviously, I'm going to take two damage. I was really hoping to draw land and then have Dress Down in response to Caves of Chaos Adventure, but... Say la vie. 
I guess I can go phantasmal image to draw. <laughs> now I drew the land. So if I phantasmal image the Caves of Chaos Adventure, I can then get a blue and go dress down, or four dress down. He's going to be able to fire blast my Caves of Chaos Adventure, but then I have Dothy Voidwalker to cast the fire blast back, and I don't have to attack because I already have the initiative here. Okay, this is going to be a close game for sure. Okay, take the initiative and get a blue. Had I drawn that swamp a turn earlier, the game would have been very easy, but also had Max drawn his land a turn earlier, likewise. So I think pretty reasonable either way. Okay, let's just get island, play island, pass the turn here. And we'll see, we'll see what Max is up to. He could also just attack with the Caves of Chaos Adventure, I suppose. But then I can just block and then Dothy Voidwalker to replay it. I think having Dothy Voidwalker up at instant speed is going to be really important here. And dress, part of the reason I want Dress Down is it stops Lutri. It will stop my Dothy Voidwalker for a turn, but I'm okay with that. Okay, so we're going to Fire Blast. It's actually going to matter a lot which one he he chooses to play. Or which one he chooses to target with Fire Blast first. He doesn't know it. He doesn't even know. But I guess he has to target the Caves of Chaos Adventurer first. And then Lutri it to the, to the Dothy Voidwalker. Because you want the you need the Dothy Voidwalker to be the first card down. So he actually it's actually kind of a, a forced play here. What's going to end up happening is I'm not going to get to use Voidwalker this turn, and he's going to get a young Pyro counter, unfortunately. Um, but I'm going to lose Caves of Chaos Adventure. His Luchi is going to come into play, do nothing. He's going to have two mountains in the graveyard, which is good because it means Batter Skull can't be cast, and. I'm going to have a Dothy Voidwalker that at the end of turn or on my turn, I can fire blast his Caves of Chaos Adventure or I can attack. I'll probably fire blast it and then from the Catacombs. I think that's going to be my plan. I think that's how this is going to play out, but it should be pretty interesting to see. All right, here's fire blast. Yep, yeah, targeting Caves of Chaos Adventure. There's Lutri. So I'm going to dress down here. So he's got Batter Skull in hand and one unknown. And the one nice thing about Dress Down 2 is it also means that... Oh, he drew Spell Pierce? Okay. Oh, wait. That was that was not a good... Pl well, no, he had to use it, but I am going to get to Dothy Voidwalker. I still can't believe he drew Spell Pierce, though. What a draw. That was a top deck. So, I guess Spell Pierce resolves. Can't pay for Dress Down. And then... Sack this, and I get to spell pierce the fire blast, which means Lutri can't copy it. Unfortunately, my Caves of Chaos Adventure is still going to get sacrificed. Did you spell pierce? Ugh. Okay. I, I had it all lined up. What an absurdly good draw. All right. Okay, I think I'm pretty much going to lose now because image goes, I take seven. He gets the initiative back. And I can from the catacombs, but now the, the Caves of Chaos Adventure is still alive. So, hmm. My teammates are unhappy about that. <laughs> I tell you that much. <laughs> uh, and he's going to get two plus one plus one counters on a creature. So I can put an Authority into play. Yeah, because if it worked the other way, then I would have still taken seven. He was still forged. He would have one less token, because assuming the Spell Pierce was a blank. And then I would get to kill Caves of Cast Adventure, and then from the Catacombs it. 
It would have been close, but there we go. Also, that Swamp earlier would have easily won the game. Okay, well, that was game one. The good thing is, I don't have any cards to sideboard, so I shall not. <laughs> Let's get to game two. All right, I am on the play. I will reveal Luris. Any moxes? Any mox emeralds? See, he had the mox ruby last time. It's only fair that I get the mox emerald this time. Really just hoping for an early him would be nice. Was hoping to him the Caves of Chaos adventure pretty badly. This hand... Oh, man. Mm, I think I'm going to keep this hand. This hand's really good. I need to draw blue or black mana, and if I do, then then we are we are doing it. All right, let's just pass. End of turn, I'm going to bobble here. And this is part of it, like, you know, playing an 18 land deck. All cheap cards. All my hand is all cards that cost two or zero, plus one Gix's command, I suppose. All right, no mocks at least. Bobble you. What do you got? Show me something, well, show me something bad. <laughs> Third path iconoclast. Okay, draw off bobble. Mox. Pyrite. Draw. All right, land? No, okay. Still don't mind exactly where I am. Like I've got a lot of, like any land obviously gets puts me in a pretty good spot. And I think I'm just going to shield Red's Edict here. All right. I think on upkeep. Shield Red's Edict. And then I have Snuff Out if I need to, but I should spend my mana on the turn where I don't. Though maybe maybe playing around Force Negations. Eh, the Spell Pierce makes that a little bit worse. Power Sync. Uh, okay, I guess I'll snuff that out. Yeah, I'm going to lose, though. <laughs> I mean, I did keep a effective one-lander. I'm willing to accept it. Okay, that's, that's a start. Oh, put that in the graveyard. <laughs> Wish I could bring it back. That'd be sick. All right. I don't feel good about this game. I'm just a little too far behind. If I draw a island here, I could have some good some good plays. Gix's command, I mean, certainly is the kind of card that could catch me up depending on where I go. Okay. Yeah. Ah, that, these games have been painful. That that spell pierce game was tough, and then I, I definitely could have mulliganed this game. Not saying not saying otherwise, but all right. Copter, no, we're 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 done here. All right, that was a beating. On to round three. All right, time for game three and some redemption. We're up four two right now. Let's hope we can keep the train going against Fiorbina here. And I'm on the draw. I have to keep this hand. Hope this draw is not too fast. He's this is the Jund player. All right, let's just pass here. And I've got some decent turn twos, Ren and Six. Huh? I think I'm just gonna go Dothy Voidwalker here to start with. Oh, Kerns would have been a really nice turn one draw. This will make Ren and Six weaker, but also if I if I hit something juicy with him to Turok, then uh, we are on. So I'm gonna try try to get some sniping in. Really want to draw a swamp here. If I draw a swamp, I can play. Well, actually, I mean a swamp would be good, but it would let me play him plus Revealing Eye. But I also have the option of Lazav plus Concealing Curtains, which isn't too bad. Or and I have DT, so I've got some plays to make. I do have to be concerned with Orcish Bowmasters. That's a, that's a good one. Kolagon's Command. Tarmogoyf. I mean, this is just classic Jund. Minsk and Boo is like probably the scariest card in the deck. If I, I hope I'm not facing down one of those right now. Okay. Looks like a K Command, if I had to guess. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah. And I'm going to lose Voidwalker, and I don't know what to discard. My hand is pretty good. Oh, Inquisition. That's fine. I have a bunch of cards I can cast. I mean, you can take him, and that is pretty good, but, like, I'm not that worried about it. And this means next turn I just go Lazav Concealing Curtains, most likely. Could also take DT if you're scared of that. So, yeah, I'm not too concerned about that. All right, and Moloch. Oh, for the trade. Oh, it even exiles. Haha, <laughs> funny. All right, well, I guess that's fine. Let's go Island, Lazav, Curtains. Don't think I have a better play than that. And then I've got a card to exile for Lazav to, to make my clue. Can also flip Curtains. Also, Gix's command is going to be really good in this matchup. Minsk and Boo here would still be pretty annoying, but yeah, I mean, that, that card's going to be good no matter when it gets cast. And I could... Hmm, I could DT for something. I, drawing a Mox would still be pretty good. At this point, I don't really want to draw a Swamp all that much. I do want to attack that Ren and Six down if I can. Watley, Poet of Unity. Okay. I'm getting a mountain. And then, oh, Firebolt 2? Just has it all. All right, or Burst Lightning. I guess that's slightly less bad. Mox, Mox, Mox. Oh, man, Island, such a bad draw. All right. Well, let's flip the Concealing Curtains. Glissa and Rex Sage, huh? Hmm. Hmm. So, Glissa. I'm not going to make Anton discard here. I'm going to attack Renin 6 because I really don't want to draw land and flip Watley. That would be a, pretty annoying. So I want to reduce the odds that that happens. Because he knows about the Gixis command and now he can't really cast Glissa. Like, if he casts Glissa, I then go Gixis command, kill your Watley, kill your Glissa. And that's pretty good. So, Ren and Six do nothing. Play Glissa. All right. We accept it. I accept your offering. So, we're going to basically trade off cards, and I'm going to be left with a DT versus a Rex Age, but also I have Luris. Yeah, that's, that's pretty good. That's, that's what we play for here. Mm, land. Destroy each creature of power two or less. Each opponent sacrifices a creature of the highest power. Mm-hmm. Kill your two things. Kill your other thing. <laughs> and you've got Rex Age plus a spell, but not a not presumably not an excellent one. You can draw a land now. Now now it's actually fine to draw a land. <laughs> Nishoba Brawler at two three. Sure. Oh, reanimate. That's pretty nice. Um let's see. Let's attack. I could reanimate Hotly. We're gonna make Glissa. Yeah, I don't really need to land that bad. Let's reanimate Glissa Sunslayer. And then I'm gonna DT here. I could get Arcane Denial. I could get Phantasmal Image. I guess that doesn't do too much, though. It would copy the Revealing Eye. I could just get Snuff out in case he draws Minsk and Boo. I could get Arcane Denial. Actually, maybe I just get from the Catacombs. That card seems like it's pretty hard to beat in this in this situation. I don't know. I've got a kind of a wealth of options here. I even have a little bit of outs to Minsk and Boo. I cast Dress Down in response to Minsk getting plus one, plus one. All right. Up a game against Jundarino. Definitely don't want the Silent Clearing. Huh? I like where we're at. Let's get to game two. All right, I'll reveal Zillurus. Any moxes? Any moxes? No. On the draw, do I like this one? Huh. I kind of don't. I don't know. Five lands is so many. I don't want to cast Arcane Denial early. Sinkhole on the draw is okay, though. I need to consult the, the Necro Sages. Ask my team what they think. Uh, I think I'm going to mulligan this hand. 
think I'm going to keep this. All right, let's do it. Yeah, I mean, keep, I guess, put sinkhole back. And uh, I think dress down is going to be good. Mm, kind of wish I kept sinkhole now. Let's see. Probe. What are we facing? Nature's lore, anime dead, green sun zenith. Okay, that's not so bad. Mountain, bauble, bauble, go. Mm -hmm. Nature's lore. Get a Zeator's Proving Ground? No, Underground Mortuary. Nice. Surveil one. Bend it. All right, bobble you. What do you got? Season Pyro. That's the last card. Whoa, that's not very castable. And what are you drawing? Whatley. Oh, that's a good draw. Oh, Island for for dress down on Whatley. And then I get to and then I get to Phantasmal Image it. All right. I'm in. I am extremely in. Dress down. Brick. Okay, you can play your forest. Ah, this is actually going kind of okay here. Uh, I'm gonna play, let's see. I'm gonna play Blood Crypt. You're, oh, you're so far away from uh, Hotleying here. Can't come close to flipping it, so I'll copy the Hotley and go get a Swamp here. Oh, this has actually worked out really well. Oh, I should have just played Concealing Curtains. I kind of changed plans midway through. But, well, Concealing Curtains actually, maybe just playing and flipping in the same turn might be better. It doesn't really save me mana to play it now. And uh, <laughs> I actually think we're doing just great. Because, yeah, Anton, you know, Fjordbina. I think I think I got that right. Fjordbina. Let, let, let me know if I, if I got it wrong. Four legs is going to... Maybe go green suns. Oh, mountain is good. Because that also lets you green suns for four. But I do have fire covenant. And then, of course, he's got animate dead. So kind of go. Oh, green suns for three. Kind of goes back and forth here. What are we getting for X equals three? So I guess I don't have questing beast to get. Oh, glissa. Okay. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to Fire Covenant these two. And... I think... Play Raucous Theater. Do I want a Swamp? I think I'll Graveyard the Swamp. And... Attack with Hotly. And then now it's like... Okay, you can animate dead... Quatly and then replay Season Pyroman and then play Season Pyromancer. You can animate dead Glissa, but I have I have some good action here. Good action indeed. Mm-hmm. Anime dead Hwatley. I mean I could have just not killed the Hwatley, but then land flip Hwatley is pretty annoying. And this also season pyro. Oh, not playing the Pyro. So your hand is Maelstrom Pulse X. <laughs> I actually don't think... Wow. Sinkhole is not terrible here. Sinkhole Mountain. Oh, I don't have enough black to do everything I want, but... Uh, let's see. Or what else could I do? I could, from the Catacombs, the Glissa, but then I just get it pulsed. I could Concealing Curtains the Season Pyromancer. I can exile this, but I can't return Transform, so I don't think I should do that. Um, I feel like I'm just like a little too far behind here. Shooter's Edict isn't like looking great. I guess I can kind of kill everything. Yeah, let's just go Curtains, Demonic Tutor. Just gonna pick up snuff out and pass the turn here. And then I'm gonna use a combination of snuff out and shielders edict to kill both those things. The things and the stuff. And then I'm hoping uh if your over here does not draw a good spell to play this turn. 
or a land, so nothing. Just draw a bad spell. <laughs> You're attacking first, huh? Okay, I'm going to pay four life to snuff that thing out. And now I'm kind of expecting Maelstrom Pulse on the Concealing Curtains followed by a Season Pyro. It's possible that... So if Anton wants to play around... Uh, Arcane Denial could try to flip Watley now. Maelstrom Pulse there. And Season Pyro. All right. So he did draw a, a blank. I'm going to eat the Watley in response. Okay. Pyro, discard. Oh, Orcish Bowmasters. Okay. That's a pretty good one. Interesting. Interesting. Um, well, I'm definitely going to cast from the Catacombs. I guess my inclination is to cast it on Glissa here. Glissa seems like a house. And then I can go get an island. That seems like the plan to me. Island, I'll just play my land here. Pass the turn. Hoping for no Minskin Boo, no removal spell. Might be a tough ask. Once upon a time is kicking things off. That sounds pretty beatable to me. I mean, we'll see what card gets fetched, but if that's the start of the turn, you've heard me say this a million times. I'll say it again. Oh, I won the match. Nice. Uh, if you start the turn by digging, that just obviously means you don't have something, or at least you don't have something and you don't have everything you need most of the time. All right. Well, a nice 2-1. Mac 3 0 Salvato got his one. He's 1-1 one, one and still playing. So that was a pretty dominant performance. Really happy about that. And... uh Luris, once again, the 2-1 here, probably below average for my Luris decks, to be honest. Like, in three rounds, I think my Luris decks win something like two and a half wins per draft on average. Maybe a little bit less than that, but not much less. I don't know. If you can go back and look at all the videos I've posted of Luris, I feel like it's like 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 2-1, 3-0, 3-0, or something. Maybe not that many. Maybe I'm overestimating myself. Nah, couldn't be. Uh, in any case, that'll do it for today. Uh, this was just classic Luris value. Double bobble. A lot of cheap creatures. Lazav was pretty sick here. Dress down's awesome. Snuff out and Fire Covenant continue to deliver. And so does from the Catacomb and Gix's Command. I'm always really happy with those in an otherwise very low curve deck. So I'll be back tomorrow with another draft. As always, I appreciate you hanging out with me and I hope to see you there. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to hit that like and subscribe button. It helps out the channel and you won't miss a single draft.